for the December 13th, 2023 regular meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Scarborough. Um, before we begin our normal uh, uh, affairs, I will ask everyone to rise and pledge allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I go through these and find them and do them real quickly because it is what it is. Um, Welcome to today, tonight's meeting. The public, this is a public proceeding and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that's being said and to view all the exhibits that are being presented. Please notify the chairperson if you are unable to see or hear the proceedings. The board works from a prepared agenda and will take up tonight's items in the order as listed with one exception. I'll bring that up in a moment. Um, the bur in each instance on the appeals, the burden is on the applicant to determine the compliance with each of the criteria or provisions of the applicable appeal. The board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When the all testimony has been heard, the chairman will close the record and the board will adopt findings of fact for each criterion of the appeal and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet that criterion. It is important to note that if any of the appeal or special exception criteria have not been met, the board must deny or appeal the appeal or application. The other thing we'll say is keep in mind that um, all of our judgments are on findings of fact. They're not on our personal views or judgments with regard to uh, the, the, um, uh, the variance being called for, the neighborhood situations, et cetera. We are simply finding, um, finding facts to either approve or deny a written appeal. Um, the one thing I would like to switch around here is just uh, we have um, an, uh, uh, um, well, before I get to this, could we call the roll? Christine Snow? Here. David Bort? Here. Peter Freilinger? Here. Kyle Noonan? Here. Joe Doherty? Here. And Richard Silkman? Here. In our uh, order of agenda, we have item seven, election of officers. Um, I had a discussion with the town's clerk's office today. We have a couple of members whose terms are expiring um, at the end of this meeting. Um, and the town council, the nomination and uh, appointments committee, will be meeting in um, early to mid-January to decide on those. So rather than vote on a chair and vice chair at this meeting, um, it's been recommended to the chairs of the various town committees that we defer such votes to the February meetings. So just wanted to let folks know that. And with that, we will not, um, we will not have an item five for, the, for this agenda. Or item seven, excuse me, item, item seven. And, and I would add, just add to that that in the bylaws, it's, it's written that you serve until you're replaced. So even if your term's expiring, you're, you're still on the board until you're either replaced or reappointed. So if the, if the appointments committee does not meet, you're stuck here, is I think what, what <laughs> Brian was trying to say. Um, with that, uh, we have the, min, uh, the minutes of the November 8th meeting. Um, has everybody had a chance to review? And are there any comments or questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Bork. Do I have a second? second. Thank you, Christine. Uh, any objections? If not, a quick show of hands. Do we approve the minutes of the November 8th meeting? That is a unanimous with one abstention. I'm just going to stay in that distance. Understood, of course. Not a problem. So that uh, is so moved. We then move on to the approval of the draft written decisions heard at that meeting, which is, we'll start with uh, appeal number 2755, the limit of uh, reduction of Mr. yard Chair, size. Yeah. With one absentee, does that mean that Kyle is a voting member this time? I think we have five voting members, don't we? Or one, two, three, four. Four. Yeah, we are short. We have two alternates. So, yes, that is correct. We would bump up one. So, um, so, so with with Michelle not here, Kyle, yes, you would be our. Kyle's our first alternate, right? Yeah. So you would be our voting member tonight. Okay. Um, and uh, thank you, Richard. Appreciate that. Um, so again, back to the approval of the draft written decisions. 
Appeal number 2755, limited reduction of yard size, size residential appeal by Sharon McBeath and uh, Laura, Laura Connolly at 6 Bay Street. Did everyone have a chance to read those? They seem to meet what we had agreed to for findings of fact. Um, so I'd ask for yeah, Richard. I'll move that we accept the order. Thank you, Richard. And a second? David, thank you very second. much. So uh, again, we'll just do a quick show of hands here. Are there... Uh, do we uh, um, approve the um, the uh, the uh, the draft written appeal? Unanimous. Thank you very much. So we will move on to appeal number twenty seven fifty six. Also a limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by Mike Richmond of Custom Concepts, um, on behalf of Neil and Heather Jamison of twenty one San River Sands Drive. Again, did everyone have a chance to read this and do the findings meet what we discussed and agreed to? See some nods. Do I have a motion to approve? David, thank you. So second. Richard, thank you to second. If no further discussion, a show of hands to approve. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll move into tonight's business. Uh, appeal number 2757. A limited reduction of yard size residential appeal. Wow, these are exciting. By Mike Richmond of Custom Concepts, Inc. Mike, uh, you've got the podium. We've been with, through this with you many times, so you know the drill. Thank you. I have this on tonight, so I don't need that. Uh, good evening. Mike Richmond, uh, Custom Concepts Architecture. I'm here on behalf of my clients tonight, um, Arthur and Donna Foss, with 8 Pillsbury Drive. And we're here requesting a, uh, another limited reduction of yard size to allow for an addition and renovation to transform their seasonal cottage into a, a year-round home. Um, this parcel is located on the inland side of Pillsbury Drive. Uh, contains a cottage, um, some really large exterior decks, um, upper and lower, uh, paved driveway, and it's pretty flat. <coughs> The overall goal is to transform this cottage into a year-round home by constructing an addition off the, what I'll call the left-hand side, to accommodate an entry, a stairway, and a single car garage, as well as a vertical expansion directly above the existing cottage um, for living space. As I always try, I worked hard to try to avoid the need for this request, but here I am. Um, but we found ourselves in this situation because we really want to maintain the existing foundation. It's in great shape. As much of the existing frame as possible, other than the roof, to make room for this, for the expansion. Um, and there's a large front deck. So we, we don't want to waste things that we don't need to waste. So that's the effort that, that led us into these log jams of my visit tonight. So with this design, I need some graphics here. There's basically three different areas, albeit small, but three different areas um, that we would ask for some relief. A portion of the garage bay, here's the floor plan, right here. If you look at the elevation from the road, gives you this sliver right here. A portion of the new story, I'm calling it, which is basically second story only. stairway here now. The, the idea is to literally take that off, reattach it. Um, but in order for me to get access to the house, it shoves it a little bit closer to the road. So it's this section here. It's only the last couple steps. Even with these, all three of these items, I, I do feel after a lot of effort that this design is the most practical approach um, to achieve the minimal goals of the project while having a, a minimal impact on the neighborhood. The relief requested on the side of the garage, which is the largest one, is really the result of a desire for us to maintain a, this stair leading up to the front of the house. Um, doing that, in a way, sort of forces the entry over uh, just a little bit, forces the new garage over just a little bit. 
in an effort to even minimize coming over any further, we're even angling the door and, and some tricks to try to make that center area as narrow as possible. So we, we're not coming out as far as the potential five feet would allow us. We also are purposely trying to place a roof deck on top of this piece to minimize that, rather than, you know, if we pull this story over it or had some other steep roof, it would even be more impactful. So that's a purposeful move to try to, keep, to, try to minimize that. We also looked at several options to avoid the need for the relief on the front of the building. This upper Tried and tried and again coming to you for your relief there. And the relief requested for the bottom of the stairs is simply allow us to reattach and reconnect the existing stair um, so we don't have to throw it away. Um, so essentially that is the that is the request and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Question for the board. Mr. Richard. <clears throat> the stairway, as I understand it extends further out but it, than it does currently, but it doesn't extend beyond the existing front deck. Is that correct? So currently, currently there's the, where the, the stairs stop. No. The deck is way out here. We would, we would need to push it out here, but it's still not mm -hmm. even as close to the as the deck is. Okay. If it, I answer that right. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and the roof line that you're talking about, that's uh, above an existing roof. We're not extending it any, f the building itself isn't extending any further to the road than the existing building extends. Correct. And in fact, glad you brought this up. Thank you. The new, the existing roof has a big overhead, just the way they were built. Our new roof actually pulls back further away from the road by six inches. And, and I guess part of that, that's the, the existing foundation effectively has got whatever, two feet or whatever uh, of, a, of a bump into the front setback already. So that's a, a found, the foundation that's is there. The yeah. Existing condition. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so those two seem straightforward. Could you talk a little bit more about the garage? Because when I was looking at the drawing, it didn't seem like it was necessary to extend the garage into that 15-foot setback, <clears throat> that there was enough room available inside the building to accommodate what you would normally have to have. I figured there must be a reason for you doing it, but I, I, it wasn't obvious to me looking at the diagram why it was necessary. Yeah, no, a, a great question. Anything's possible. But in order for us to get the, the stairway connection, you can see how, how big this, I mean, stairways are just large. To move over a garage, you would be chewing up such a substantial amount of the, of the finished square footage inside. It wasn't to retain the frame, which is existing in the existing quality. Um, that's the reason we said, well, no, you can leave the floor system intact and push it to the outside. There's an existing stair in there. And it looks like the stairway that's really necessary is the one that allows access to the basement. It, yeah, it goes actually basement all the way up to the top floor. No, but it, it, it feels like the, 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 the stairway up top, maybe you could try some things with, but in order to make the access to the basement really usable, you, you need to have that space to do a turnaround in, 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 in the lower area and, and that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it will just be a garage slab. It's not, there's not a basement that extends that. Okay. Slab, slab on the yeah. <clears throat> if you, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Sure, here. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <Go ahead. clears throat> 
if you were to rearrange the inside a little bit, there's, there's room on the back and the deck for additional building area. <clears throat> what do you know what it would have cost to do that cosmetically inside if you had to do that? I'm just wondering what that what the value of that might have been. Yeah, that that's a very good question. In other words, if we if we were to be backwards for more living space and a lot of the space in the front To be used as the stairway and Yeah, hard hard for me to put a number on. Definitely, you know, um, scope creep, as they say. Now we're, we're extending two sides instead of one, so it definitely would be more. However, I, I don't, I don't have a number. It would definitely be more, but I don't have a number. <clears throat> but I mean, and you're extending the back. I mean, that's all new anyway. That whole back is going to be new anyway. It, sorry, this portion is nothing. New. That's right. So it would be only a question of moving that back wall. That's vertical in our in our view, over five feet, and you would be able to then move everything over. You would have a slightly smaller living space, of course, because it's not as long as the full garage. But it seemed like it could accommodate that. Again, anything's possible. Sure. Well, that's what it's a question of money and, and effort, and so. It's definitely a financial. You know, this this again. This, I don't want to say isolates the, the work done, but it's, it's all on one side. It's not wrapping mm -hmm. up, but that would be possible, no. But definitely more expensive. Sure. A question about the existing basement versus the, the existing basement plus new basement. I was confused by the diagram. Okay. Um, what is being poured for new basement? It, it looks like, I don't know, there, there's an outline of, there are spaces which I think are just the finished walls of the existing basement. And then there's a line outside of that, which I'm guessing is the actual um, uh, the concrete of the, 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 the foundation. Are you, look, are you looking at this sketch right here? I'm, 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 right now I'm looking at the old one, the, the, the original one. Um, and I'm trying to map that onto that diagram. So you're, you're right. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at kind of them from one to old to new. Gotcha. So, yeah. Well, I guess to answer your question, the, the full basement is here now. It's all finished, mm -hmm. finished space. The idea would be here's the new basement space to get the stairway down for access. Yep. This would just be the slab um, up on wood. Gotcha. Okay. And so the, 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 the new foundation is really just that trapezoid there. Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Technically, it's a foundation, but only a frost wall. Got it. Okay. 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 Any other questions? David? All right. <clears throat> uh, what is the proposed um, width of the new garage? The total width? Not, not that part, the, where a car would actually park. 12 feet. 12 feet, so that's pretty much feet, as small yeah, as you could go. Industry standard. Yeah, right. exactly. Inside of the 11 foot six. Right, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from folks? Okay. Just uh, one question. <clears throat> if you had to guess at how much it would cost not to require that extra five feet on the setback. I mean, the standard is impractical, right? right? You've told me it's possible. Yep. Now the question is, do we know about what it's going to cost? I mean, if it's, you know, 2,000 bucks or $200,000, I mean, that's a big difference. And so I just need to have, I think we need to have something about the practicality of that particular piece. Try to weigh this out because in one point this would be a little bit smaller, but then I would have a lot more impact here. Yeah, it, would, it would definitely be in the you know twenty thousand dollar range. Definitely not two. Mm -hmm. Definitely not two hundred. Um, twenty or thirty, probably. 
<clears throat> and do, yeah. you, do you know about what the total cost of this renovation is, ballpark? I mean, wow. you must, must have given somebody a figure. So we don't know whether this is 10% of the total cost or 50%, that extra 20,000. Mm -hmm. It's three levels of finished space, plus one. Yeah. Um, I, I think we need to keep in mind what kind of an appeal this is. Uh, this is a limited reduction in yard of size. Um, it's not a practical difficulty appeal, you know, which, you know, cost becomes a, a very important factor. Differential cost becomes very uh, important when you have practical difficulty. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think we, I'm comfortable with not having precise numbers on this particular one. You know, with, you know you're, what you're saying is in your professional opinion, this is the least expensive way of doing it. Well said, yes. And I would say what you're asking for as far as relief on a 15 yard, a 15 foot setback on the side is, um, if I'm not mistaken, is three feet, four inches? Correct, to, to the overhead. Yeah, to the overhang, one, yeah. One foot, 10 inches to the structure. So yeah. 20, so back. this is a minimal amount, and we are within our range of five feet, which we can approve. Okay, so you're not asking for something we can't do. And, you know, you're saying this is the most practical way of doing it from a cost point of view without having precise numbers. I'm okay with that. I had a quick question about just the percentage of the lot size that is now going to be covered by the structure post this. It, it wasn't listed in the, in the, I didn't see it listed in the documents, but I'm, I'm assuming that you're still within the allowable envelope. Thank you, yes. Okay, Thank you. Mr. Longstaff will ensure that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. Yeah, sure. do, do you have a sense of what percentage of homes in the area are seasonal versus used year round? That's an excellent question. I know it seems to be changing a lot every year. I'll say yes. that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. <clears throat> Based upon my nightly walks, it's probably around 60 to 65 percent a year round. A year round. Wow. Now, some of them could be rented, part, but that they're occupied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and certainly living down kind of in that area of town as well, the proportion of homes that are winterized and full time usable has been increasing steadily over time as well. So um, even if they're not, even if the owners may only occupy them seasonally, they are occupiable and often occupied by rentals for longer, piece, stre longer stretches of the year. Okay, thank you. Those of us that live inland don't, uh, we don't get down to that part of town. <laughs> <as> much, <so. laughs> yeah, you should make the efforts, it's quite nice actually. Um, Okay, were there any, um, any other comments from, the, from, from Mike or you or the owners? Yeah. Any public comments? Are you opening the public hearing? Uh, I, believe, I, I am, before we um, have him review the... the... So we did, we did have uh, an email um, that was sent in by uh, Ronald Govan. Um, and I do not, I failed to write his address, but he's a neighbor. Um, and he says, hi, Mike, we hope you are doing well and had a great Thanksgiving. We met with Donna and Artie and love the plans that you came up with for their renovation. I just wanted to send a quick email to let you know that we have no issues with the size, height, or proximity to our property line. So they must be the adjacent property line. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, we hope that they are able to get any approvals that they need. Thanks, Ron and Katie Govan. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, no. His, his uh, signature line is in Illinois. Right. So there we go. Okay. 
Okay, so um, Mike, you've been through this before. We'll ask you to kind of run through the, um, the uh, criteria uh, um, and uh, how you've addressed those criteria in the application. So if you're ready to do that, let me know. Gotcha. We'll start with number one, the existing building or structures in the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size uh, or size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, where the lot is vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Yes, according to town records, the home was constructed in 1962. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Yes, currently the cottage is a, is a full two-story seasonal structure. This relief would allow the Foss family to have three floors of living space as well as a single car garage um, similar to other properties. In fact, many other properties have multi-car garages and are much taller than this proposed structure. This relief would allow the Foss family to use and enjoy their property similar to other properties in the zoning district. And like remind me, which zoning district is this in? This is in one of the Pine Point districts, isn't it? It is in the R2 district. It's just in R2. Okay, got it. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, number three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical co to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. No, despite our efforts, this is the most practi practical approach we could find. We tried many approaches to minimize the garage and entry area while maintaining the stair leading up to the front deck, including placing that front wall with the main door at an angle just to save space and keeping the width of the garage at a sort of an industry standard 12 feet. We also tried several designs to avoid the request for the small section of the new roof that is within the front setback. But our attempts created an odd jog in the roof that we simply could not blend in character with the home or with other no homes in the neighborhood. The need for the relief for the stair is to allow us to provide access similar to what exists today right up to the front of the home safely. Got it. Uh, the impact, number four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. No, I, I don't think it will. Uh, many of the similar properties in the immediate area are of similar scale or are much larger than the proposed design. Um, a lot of them have garages, much larger garages and decks. And uh, number five, the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, or building or structure, and so that we are not considering an after-the-fact application. No, they have not. And Brian, you can... You better not have. <laughs> that. There we go. Okay. Um, if there's no further discussion, I'll close public comment, and we will enter into our deliberations. Public comment is closed, or public deliberations is closed. Um, any general comments before we begin? <clears throat> I just have one. <clears throat> the criteria number three. It says practic not practical. It would not be practical to con construct the proposed expansion. And it doesn't say <clears throat> that, that I mean that's that's the word. Now, David seemed to have a different interpretation of what not be practical meant. And I'm wondering if there's any clarity that we could provide around that term. Let, let, me, let me jump in with my sort of gut on this. I mean, to, to me, putting a garage on the back of the house, it's possible, but it's not really practical. To, to me, I, I feel like, you know, practical doesn't have to mean... Um, it, it doesn't have to mean it's all but impossible. I, I think that, I, I feel like this criteria is met even though, sure, the, the house could be, I think the expansion and the added garage could be accommodated in some way, reconfiguring the, you know, basically the existing structure on the lot. But I, I feel like practical is not that high of a bar. <clears throat> it's, it's certainly not a high bar in the sense that <clears throat> you describe it, but the applicant has indicated that this is the most practical, meaning that there are other practical options. This is the most practical. 
Now, I didn't think that our standard, not practical, allows for that kind of delineation between the next most practical and the most practical or the third most practical. I mean, they will all be practical, right? And so if they're all practical, then they all satisfy the standard, which says not practical. You see what I mean? Yeah. And that's the trouble that I'm having with this. Now, <clears throat> the dollar figures impact that issue. Right? And, and the amount of property that they're taking impacts the issue, which I think was David's point. So there's a way of you know, evaluating that. But um, Well, I, I, I'll, I'll take it a little bit differently. There's the practicality, number one, you need to have a one-car garage. And so that has to be a minimum width of 12 feet. I think that, 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 that's fine there. Um, they wish to attach the garage to the home. That's a practical consideration, which I think in Maine would be undeniably practical. And, for us to force a detached garage, which might be achievable, would be uh, uh, would be onerous and impractical to demand of an applicant. Um, what I see as being kind of the, the trigger for me on this one is that that little trapezoidal room that they have, which um, is between the one car garage and the house, but sits on top of the stairway that leads down into the basement. Not having that stairway would be an impractical way of designing this renovation. Um, and not having a, an adequate space in that little trapezoid to allow people to move down and move stuff around into the basement itself um, would be an impractical, would be impractical as well. So, um, Richard, that, that's one of the reasons I, I asked the question about that little trapezoid room. To me, that, to make that stairway to the basement work, you've got to have a certain amount of, of, of space that shoves that 12 foot minimum width of the one single car garage out a little <clears> bit to the, to the point where you're a, a, a foot and a bit over um, the, 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 uh, the setback line. And, and that's where I come down to the, okay, going down the trail of design that they've gone to, to, to envision an overall practical and rational house design, they've, they, 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 they effectively end up meeting that standard. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not disputing or questioning whether this is practical. It certainly is, and it may be the most practical. I'm just wondering how we interpret a response by the applicant, which says that it's the most practical against the standard that it has to be impractical to do it any other way. No, it's not that it's to do it any other way. It's that any other way would also not be in conformance. That's, the, that's really the standard. So this but, we would do it a, but we would do it a different way, and it would be in conformance. Mm, what I'm hearing, I, I, don't, I, I disagree. You'd still have to have, again, I come back to that little trapezoidal room. Otherwise, you're shoving the, 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 the garage into the back. No, 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 no. You're, all you're doing is you're reconfiguring the existing interior stairway, you're moving that over. No, I don't think you're, you're, out, you're also putting it outside. No, no, well, no, then, it's all then, indoors. Then, then if I could ask the applicant then to, to, to re-explain that one, because where you were showing where that other potential stairway would go would be outside the existing foundation wall. That is correct. Yeah. That would be, the stairway to the basement would be in the addition. Yeah. But the, but the stairway could be in the addition. But again, yes, it could. But now you're, Im, you're imposing a set of requirements by us that are essentially somewhat arbitrary. I, I'm not, that, that's not our role as a zoning board on a, on a limited reduction of, zone, of, of lot size um, uh, of variance. Brian, do you have any guidance on this one? Nope. <laughs> it's your decision. It's your, it's your deliberation. Yep. You have your opinion. There are other opinions. You vote your conscience, they'll vote theirs. You're not here to redesign the project. If you don't think they met the standard, vote that way. Okay. That's, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not going to weigh in on this. This is your deliberation. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. 
Thank you for the explanation, Brian. We appreciate that. That's how I stay yeah. the, <laughs> the, the pithy one-word answer was understandable, but thank you for the explanation as well. We appreciate that. Um, okay. Uh, well, we're going to talk about this in a minute or two anyway, and uh, what I'm going to propose is have Richard kind of take us through number three, but um, we'll start with number one, um, the existing building or structures on the lot for which the limited deduction of um, large... We know what number one is. Um, Christine, uh, do you, could you summarize what your opinion on that and maybe we can find a fact on that. The assessor's records show that the house was built in 1962, which is before 1991. There we go. And that's all the records I'll indicate that, no, no question there. Okay, so um, uh, agree of finding a fact that the town, other the house was constructed in 1962 and therefore this is met. Um, all those in favor? Unanimous, thank you very much. Number two, David. The request for reduction is uh, reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property uh, to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner or similar properties uh, are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, in answer to that, I would say that uh, there are many other properties that have attached garages as well as roof decks, top decks. Any other comments from folks? The only other, only other observation I'll make on this is that the houses in the neighborhood are generally getting additional house um, stories and things like that. They are expanding in size. So this is very much in the same manner as many other properties um, are enjoying in this, um, in this part of town in the zoning district. So um, do we agree to that finding of fact? All those in favor? That is unanimous. Richard, please take us through number three. <clears throat> Due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. <clears throat> this is a little bit problematic. Um, the Applicant acknowledges that the design is the most practical approach, suggesting that there are other approaches that are also practical, perhaps from a design perspective. Um, what leads me to conclude that this, <clears throat> that those other design options would not be practical from a cost perspective is the estimates uh, that were provided. I understand they were ballpark estimates, but looking at the construction required, they're probably within the reasonable <clears throat> range of um, accurate estimates that adding additional cost of thirty to $40,000 onto this cost of the uh, renovation in order to accommodate the, or, or to eliminate the need to take that extra couple of feet for the garage seems like a, an inefficient use of money and a bar that we probably shouldn't impose on the applicants. Okay. Any other th thoughts on this one? We had a bit of a discussion already, but any, any other thoughts? Uh, I think by doing it this way, it's, they're creating a, a, a structure that's much more compatible with design features and of other homes in that neighborhood. And I think that's an important consideration. Um, yes, as you pointed out, Mr. Chair, there's been a lot of homes that have been uh, added on to redesign, uh, made you know, instead of seasonal year round now. Um, so this really falls into that whole general category of what other homes have become. And you know, the design of the home certainly fits into that a lot better than any of the other, you know, uh, you know, the features or ways of doing it, you know, may have yielded. Um, I don't think they would have been as attractive at all. So having a garage in the back, for example, uh, or as you pointed out, the, you know, the stairway configuration. So this, this really makes the most sense to me from an aesthetics point of view. Let me just add, maybe I'm a simple thinker. I mean, to me, the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure includes a garage. It, due to the location of the existing structures on the lot, the options are to either put a garage where it's proposed to be located 
or in the back. I don't think putting a garage in the back is really practical. So I, w I think that this criteria is met. Okay. Joe, anything, anything, anything to add? Yeah, just um, a question for Brian. <clears throat> the current property, the lot coverage is what? Do we know? What the approximate lot coverage? It's way under. It's way under the 20% okay. lot coverage. Okay. Um, in, in this this addition, I did the figures, but I didn't put it in the, okay. in the thing. Right. And, and that's another thing that we'll be looking at when the building permit comes. So. Okay. It's not really a consideration of the board at this okay. point. That's okay. a building gotcha. permit review issue. But I did check to make sure it made okay. sense. Okay. I I, I think. I'm inclined to, um, to, to to agree with uh, Mr. Bork on this one. This is, um, I don't, I, I worry, and, and maybe um, for the for the benefit of the applicants and future applicants, using the phrase "most practical" might might not be helpful for us as a board um, in 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 our understanding of of the deliberations here. Um, this is clearly practical. Um, both from a design perspective, from an interior design perspective, from a spatial movement perspective internally, um, and to the extent that this is the proposed and desired design of the owners from an exterior and interior perspective, then this is without question a practical design. Um, I think for us to get down the, the for, for this kind of a variance, for us to get down the road of most practical, least practical, or whatever, may be unhelpful for us. Um, so, uh, but clearly this is practical. And again, I, I and, and, and I think the other thing to, to clarify on this one too is this is clearly a question about the, the garage slab that moves over onto the, the side variance. I don't think we have an issue with the building up from the front or the minor extension of the stairway. I don't, I don't think those are in any way, are in any way questionable on these. But um, I, 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 on that basis of, is this a design that is within the, um, the, the the standards of the neighborhood that allows the owners to enjoy a home that fits the character of what Pine Point has become? Um, yes, and is this a practical way to, as best as they can, meet the requirements of the zoning code with minimal requests for variance? I think it is, so I would be inclined to say, yes, we've met this. So. I'll go for one by one. Um, uh, Christine, how do you vote on this one? I'm comfortable with it. David? Yes. Richard? Yes, and especially since the next door neighbor whose property would be most impacted submitted a letter to us indicating that they were comfortable with the design. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Um, and then, um, um, I'm spacing on names today. I vote yes. Thank you. <laughs> I vote yes as well. So we'll move on to number four. Um, uh, <laughs> Kyle, why don't you take number four? The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. I think we can make a finding of fact that this criteria is met. Um, the, um, there's already a lot of non-conforming uh, properties, and the, the extent of um, non-conformance is so minor that it won't really have um, much effect on the neighborhood at all. Yeah. I would agree. I, I would also add that there are plenty of Confor fully conforming properties in that area that are bulkier and bigger and, and have a greater impact on the visual environment and the rest. So um, I would concur with that as well. Um, I'll do a show of hands on this one. Do we agree that this is met? That's unanimous. Thank you. And I'll take the easy one. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested, so the Board of Appeals is not considering an after the fact uh, application. We've received uh, a, um, a confirmation from both uh, the, the chief, the code enforcement officer, and the applicant that this is the case. So we can agree that this is, uh, this is um, not, in fact, true. Um, do we have a show of hands on that one? That's 
unanimous as well. Thank you very much. Then on that, if we have no further discussion, uh, do we have a motion to approve, uh, a, let me make sure I'm saying it correctly, approve appeal number 2757, 2757 for, uh, for 8 Pillsbury Drive for Arthur and Donna Fossey. So moved. Thank you, David. Do I have a second? I second that motion. Thank you, Kyle. And uh, then uh, may have by a show of hands, do we have agreement? That is unanimous, and the appeal passes. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Okay. Now, where is my agenda? Where did I put that? Thank you. Okay, we talked about the election of officers. Um, we have an item number eight, a discussion of other, on other boards and committees remote participation policies for conducting business. We talked, we've talked about this for the last few. Do we have any new news? No, we do not. I did talk to the clerk about this. She felt it would be taken up by the council in the first, probably the first or second meeting of the new year. Okay. So um, do we wish to keep this on the agenda then for the next meeting, or do we want to wait until we have positive motion, or any thoughts? <clears throat> we should probably wait until we have some direction from the council, given the decisions we made at the last meeting. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that as well. And um, so let's, um, we, we won't add this for the next agenda item, but we will keep an eye out on this and we'll ask staff to just mm -hmm. keep us all informed of when we see some, some action there. Um, any other zoning board comments? <clears throat> I would just like so, to let folks know that I won't be here for the next four meetings. So oh, if one down. of the two of you guys are around, Make, you know, make sure that, you know, you know at least you're going to have some utility here. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm always happy. To Going to California. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, get, yeah. Get, get have a good time. Thank you. Yep. Enjoy that. Yes. Uh, maybe before, maybe before you, you, you're done with your trip, we'll have a decision on the remote policy. <laughs> <laughs> well, if things work the way they usually do, it'll be the day I get back that the decision will be made. <laughs> exactly. But in the meantime. Correct. So. Yes. That's really useless. So um, any other comments? Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, I would just add, Mr. Chair, um, wishing the board and, and the public um, uh, a happy holiday season, happy and safe holiday season. Uh, Agreed. we won't meet until after the new year. That's right. Uh, everybody have a lovely holiday season and a happy new year and stay warm. It's getting cold again. So, uh, um, yes. So now a motion to adjourn and go back to the cold. So moved. Kyle, and a second from Mr. Silverman. Any objections? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone.